Glasgow University is, is one of the top 100 universities in the world. One of the great things about it is that it's a world leader in a, a lot of different physics groups and departments. Optics is, is really quite exciting because it's one of those, those fields of physics where if you've actually got a laser out in front of you, you've got your mirrors and lenses, when you make small changes to it, you can actually see the, the finished result instantly. I always found the whole concept of classical optics to be quite an intuitive sort of, you know, that lenses, mirrors, everything's, you know, imaging. I found it all very intuitive and quite visual. You can, you can visualise a lot of the stuff in your mind. One of the uh, exciting fields that's being looked into at the moment is ghost imaging. This is possibly going to be used in the future in astronomy, so it can actually clear up a fuzzy image, or in microscopy, where you can get a much greater resolution than was, was thought previously possible. One of the most important aspects of the, the ghost imaging experiment is the down conversion. This is where you have a UV photon incident upon a non-linear crystal and what you get out is two infrared photons. These have half the energy of the incoming photon, but twice the wavelength. The way the photons are produced in the, the non-linear crystal is very similar to that of the gain medium in a laser, with electrons jumping down energy levels and photons being produced. This is an example of a sort of classical ghost imaging, where we have a multi-mode detector and a camera, and what happens is an ultraviolet photon is absorbed by the crystal and emits two near-infrared photons. And it's designed such that the first photon of the pair hits the detector, and the detector then sends a pulse to the camera and says, open the camera window for a very short amount of time and wait for the other photon. And you design the path length from the other photon to the camera such that for this very short window, it'll wait for the photon, and then if it arrives, it then records it in one of its pixels. So you could create some image with these photons which uh, shouldn't exist on the camera on its own, shouldn't exist on the detector on its own, but requires both the detector and the camera. If any other photons arrive without the camera window being triggered, then it gets rejected. So in this case, what we do is we block the detector, um, which then doesn't send a trigger to the camera, so the camera window isn't going to open. So, so this photon would be rejected. So the, the idea of ghost imaging in a general sense is you can, you can encode images which, which can't be seen from either point. You need, you need information from both sources and then you can extrapolate the data. So you find astronomers quite often, after using optical telescopes, you get turbulence in the upper atmosphere, clouds, you know, everything which distorts your image. So, so instead of your image of a star, you have some smeared out thing. So what they normally do is they'll use some guide beam, which then they can use to, to tell them that the information of these aberrations, these distortions. And then they, they do the opposite of that to their telescope, which then undoes all the aberration, which is quite a complicated process, but it works very well. On our scale, because of the, the nature of this, this entanglement from what we call down conversion, the aberration in each beam cancels each other out. So we could create the identical aberrations on, on each of these down converted beams, which would then cancel each other out and we'd have our signal without doing any adaptive optics. So in the future that could be quite a, an interesting idea, which we are going to look at.